Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to do a basic overview of working with true-false variables in Articulate Storyline. And again, when you're working with variables in Storyline, it's a three-step process. First step is to create that initial variable. You give it a name, you choose the type of variable, you choose the starting value for the variable. Second step is to adjust the variable, and you do that using triggers. And step three is to use the variable by evaluating what the value is of the variable and then use it for something or, or to do something. So in this case, we're going to use a true-false variable to determine whether or not a scene, or in this case, a module, has been visited. So we have two modules here on the slide, and we want to use a variable to know when the learner's completed a module, and then give some visual feedback to indicate. So if I click this first module, I'm gonna to jump to a slide, and I've got some information. Now I could keep going through it, but this is only a, a one-slide course. Click the back button, and you see right here now we have this visited state to indicate that that module is completed. And this is a really common use for true-false variables when you want to track completion on a specific slide or scene or module in your e-learning course. Okay, so if you're following along, go ahead and open up your practice files for the variables. And what I want to do to begin is I want to add a trigger to this first button that jumps to the next slide. We do that with a simple trigger that just tells storyline to jump to the next slide. So go ahead and create a new trigger. And what do I want to do? I want to jump to slide. And the next slide is fine when user clicks the mod one button. Okay. Now if I jump to the next slide, I want to be able to get back from this slide to that starting slide. So we're going to add one trigger here that says jump to slide. In this case, I can say previous slide. Or, if you're working with it in a, in a larger context of more slides, we might want to just specify the start slide. In this case, it doesn't matter because we only have two slides, but if you're working with uh, multiple slides in your scene, you may want to spe specify that the main slide, the menu slide, is where you want to return. Go ahead and click OK. And let's just test this out to see how this is working. So, preview. All right, so here's our, our menu. I'm going to go ahead and click Go. Jumps over here to slide two, you can see that. And if I click back, it jumps back to the menu. All right, so that's perfect. What we want to do now is start working with a variable so we can actually track whether or not that slide or that module has been completed. Close the preview. And so we want to use a variable for this. We want to know, yes, this module is completed, true or false. All right, so we'll go ahead and create a new variable. And the variable for this type will be a true false. And let's call this mod one complete. Type of variable is a true false. And I'm going to set the value to false, right? When you first begin a course, you haven't completed anything. So the false makes more sense to me when I'm reading this. Is this complete? No, it's not because we just started the course. Go ahead and click OK. There's our variable. Click OK one more time. And to help verify that my variable is doing what I want it to do, I'm going to work with a reference variable. And remember, a reference variable just displays the current value of the variable. And we'll go ahead and put a text box up here. And with that active text box, I'm going to go to insert one more time, choose reference, and I'll choose my mod one complete variable. And I'm going to also copy this. I'm just going to go back to the first slide as well and paste it up there, right? So just have it on two different slides helps me, to, depending on where I'm working, uh, track whether or not this is uh, being set to true or false correctly. All right, so let's just test that the mod one variable is still set to false when we preview. So let's just preview this uh, one more time. Set to false, I'm gonna click the button to go, and it's still false. Even if I go back, it's gonna be false. All right, close your preview. All right, now we need to add a trigger to adjust the mod one complete variable to true when the learners click the back button, right? So when we click this back button, we'll make this the, that, that, the, the event that changes the completion of this module to complete or to true, and then we can evaluate that. So I'm gonna select the button, add a new trigger, and this time I don't wanna to jump to slide, but I want to adjust a variable, and the variable is the mod one complete for module one, and the assignment is a value of true, right? So it was false, now it's going to be true when I click the back button. Go ahead and click OK, and let's preview our scene. 
All right, so we can see that the variable is set to false. And when I click this button to go to the next slide, the next module, I can see that it's still set to false. And when I click back, it'll change it to true. Hey, it didn't work. And that's a really good tip right here. It should have worked, but our trigger order matters. So I'm gonna close the preview. And I'm on the second slide. Notice right here what's happening. Because triggers are, are fired from top to bottom, What's happening is we're jumping back to that first slide before this trigger has time to fire. So what I need to do is just reorder these two triggers. So I can just move this one to the top. So the first thing it's gonna do is change the value of the variable, and then it's gonna jump and leave the slide to go back to the first slide. Let's go ahead and preview this one more time. Okay, so it's false, click go. It's still set to false, click back. Hey, and there we go, now it's set to true. So whenever you're working with variables, this is why, first off, that reference variable is so valuable because it really does help you troubleshoot um, the, the triggers and the variable values that you're working with. And again, the second tip here is just to remember that trigger order does matter, especially when you're leaving the slide to jump to another slide, you wanna set that variable first. All right, so the final step is we wanna add some visual feedback here to our go button to change to a completed state when uh, the learner has completed the module. I'm gonna bring open my states panel. And you can see right here, we've already added a custom state called complete. So what you wanna do is just evaluate whenever this variable changes, right? When it changes to true, we wanna change the state of this button to complete. And we do that with a trigger, right? So we're gonna add a new trigger. That's going to say first off what? We wanna change the state of Right, our module one button to state complete, and that's a custom state, which we, we can see up here. When the timeline starts, the timeline for the practice file, but we need a condition for it, right? The timeline's gonna get us to reevaluate whether or not that variable has changed. And this time it's the variable mod one complete is equal to true. When it's true, go ahead and change the state to complete. Click OK. And click OK one more time, and let's preview our scene. All right, we'll click our button, jump to the content slide, jump back, and we can see that it says true, the variable's changed, and we have our updated completion status. So as you can see, variables are powerful and flexible, and they're a great way for adding any type of conditional interactivity to your course. The best part is that anyone can use them because you don't need to know anything about coding. Now, if you're just getting started, variables might seem a little confusing, but just go through the practice activities, do them a couple times. If you find you get stuck or have any questions, just ask us in the forums and we'll be more than happy to help out.